All right, so this is an example of binary search. So in this problem, or in this code here, uh, we have an array uh, called scores, and it's populated with some integer values. Um, the key that we're going to be searching for here is 12. And uh, then we have a function here called binary search. And this binary search is going to take two arguments. It's going to take the key, and it's going to take the, uh, the array name, which is going to be scores. So it's going to look for a function in our code uh, called binary search that takes two arguments. One is the key, and one is the array. So here we've declared three variables, int, low, mid, and high. And we're going to use these as we're searching uh, to find our key that we passed in. So here uh, we initialize low to equal to zero, and then high is going to equal the limit, uh, minus one. Here's our global variable, so it's the length of the array, the number of values in the array, minus one for the offset. And then here we're going to do a while loop. And so we'll say low is less than or equal to high, and so high is set to 11 minus one, which is going to give us 10. And while I'm doing this here, as I'm iterating, I'm going to use this chart uh, to help us keep chart to ch uh, help us to keep track of um, how the search is occurring. So we have low, which is at zero, and less than equal to high, uh, which is at ten. Is that a true condition? Yes, it's a true condition. So here we'll go and say zero plus high, which at this point is ten. So ten divided by two uh, is going to give us five, and so mid is going to be five. So here you'll see we have mid set for our first, and then low is at index zero, and then high is at, at 10. So then now we're going to go through our decision-making logic. So we'll say if key is equal to scores mid, so it's 12 equal to uh, scores mid, which is going to equal the value of 10, because we plug in 5, and if we plug in 5, index 5, we get 10. Is that a true condition? No, that's not a true condition. So uh, we'll go to our next else if branch, and we'll say it's 12 uh, less than scores mid, which is 10. Or it's 10, in this case, greater than 12. Uh, that's the fault. That's not true. So we'll skip this branch, and we'll go to our else branch. And we'll say it's 12 greater than 10. Yes, that is true. And so at this point here, we'll take mid, which is 5, plus 1, and that'll become our new low. So <clears throat> low is now going to become, I'll just type it in here. It's going to represent the index of 6. And then we'll go back around here, and then we'll occur, this, this, this looping structure will iterate again. So now we'll say it's low less than or equal to high. And so low is 6. Um, and then high is still 10. So we'll plug in here. So 6 plus 10 is 16. So 16 divided by 2 is, um, is 8. So now our new mid becomes here. Let me correct this here. So now <laughs> we're going to go through our decision structure again, and we'll say if 12 is equal to scores mid, or in this case is it equal to 14, that's false. Uh, and then here we'll go to our branch, we'll, so we'll skip the statement here, we'll go to our else if, and so we'll say if 12 uh, less than, or if, if scores mid, which is uh, 14, is that greater than 12? Yes. So we go into the block here, and so we'll take mid, uh, which is at the value of uh, 8, because uh, of here, right, minus 1, that gives us uh, 7. So our new high becomes 7, the index of 7. And then we skip out the else, um, we skip the else branch, and then we occur again here. So our low still remains the same. So our low is going to be here. And then we'll basically uh, uh, this iteration occur again, right? So now we'll say is low less than or equal to high. So low is holding a value of six, and then is six 
less than or equal to high, which is a 7. That's true. So we'll go into the block here. And then we'll do our calculation. So low is 6 plus high, which is 7. So 6 plus 7 is 12. So 12 divided by 2 is 6. All right, so our mid now is sitting here. So we're just going to do like this. So our mid is 6, and then here we're going to go through the decision structure. So we'll say it's 12 equal to score is mid. So score is mid is holding a value of 11. That's not true. Um, so we skip this block, and then we go to our else branch, and we'll say it's 12. Um, I'm sorry, if score is mid, uh, which is going to be 11, is that greater than 12? Um, so is 11 greater than 12? That's false. So we'll go here to the else branch. So we'll skip the what's on line 10 here. We'll go to the else branch. And then we'll say it's 12 greater than scores mid, uh, which is holding the value of 11. That is true. And so uh, now we'll take mid, which is holding a value of 6. So 6 plus 1 is, <clears throat> um, 6 plus 1 is, I'm sorry, 7. And so low is now here. And so now we go back up to our iteration. We, this occurs again. So we'll say while low, which is 7, is less than or equal to high, uh, is that a true statement? So high is at the value of 7. And because it has the comparison operator of equal, so that is true, right? So 7 is equal to 7. So we go in, and then we'll say while low and high are both 7. So 7 and 7, 14 divided by 2 is 7. So mid is now here. All right. And then <clears throat> we'll now go through here and make a comparison. So 12 is equal to scores mid, which is 12. That's true, right? So we finally hit our first elf if condition, and then we return mid. And so mid is holding the index value of 7. So once this function gets done returning, right? So essentially both low, mid, and high are here uh, within this, this quadrant or this square. So when it returns, it's going to return the value or the index of 7 to our function. Uh, so result will hold 7. And so if you can kind of look at what's going on here, uh, we have, so for our first iteration here, we have... 0, 5, and 10, and then after that we have 6, 8, and then 10. And then our next iteration, we change low, to, and low is assigned 6, the mid was 6, and then the high was 7, and then the last one here, they were all 7, right, because they're all in this quadrant here, or the square. So you can think of binary search as it's, it's basically looking for the middle value, and then it's going to pick a side, whether it's to the left or to the right. Um, and then it's going to keep doing that until it finds the index value that you're looking for. Right? So that's a short video on binary search. Um, and hopefully this, this makes a little makes sense here in terms of how we actually arrived or used these statements or this, this logic here to do binary search.